okay um how many of you have joined today okay Is this Shima Rathod? Who is this? And I am Shima Kanyawal. Yeah, but your surname is showing Rathod. Ma'am, I just changed it. This, uh, uh, this is your surname? Yes, ma'am. Rathod? Ma'am, this is my husband's surname. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. My name is Seema Karnewal, ma'am. Okay, okay. Okay, just wait one minute. I'm going to share. I have told you all now that that I will discuss in detail the correlation candle stout and also the power uh, of hypothesis, the relationship between the alpha beta sample size with power, okay? So first I'm covering this part, okay? So just remember the example, okay? I'm opening that also first, then it will be good. Just wait. Okay. Just look at the picture. In uh, the last session, maybe, or or uh, I think uh, in the second last session, okay, I covered this thing and I told you that I will explain. You can go through on in uh, on internet. Uh, I can explain you in detail. So because I want to uh, let you know hypothesis things first, okay, whatever. So first of all, look at this. I've told that is the concordance and discordance happens in what respect, okay? That is on the group. There are two kinds of groups have been taken, okay? That is education level, another one is financial status. So how actually these things work compute, uh, if you want to do mathematical computation, you need to, then you can understand uh, the mathematical part. That is how we have to compute these things. But look at this, <laughs> these are, there is two kind of group. One is education level. Suppose this is education level, graduate, graduate. Uh, so, and this is rich and this is middle class. Okay, so uh, when one of the group becomes equal or to, uh, at least one of the groups, it may happen there are two groups become equal. That is, it is graduate rich, it is also graduate rich. So then there will be again time. Okay, uh, at, but here uh, the second group differs, that is middle class and rich, but graduate, graduate is uh, same. Okay, so th that is a type. Okay, so uh, we have to give numeric value when we do such computation. I will show you that. And look, this is discordance. That is uh, how, uh, because here the look, 
here this is your education level postgraduate and this is graduate okay so look affluent and rich okay so <coughs> so if any one of the group is uh, greater than uh, the other value and uh, the other uh, the member of the other group is less than the uh, second one then there is a discordance i will uh, show you the mathematical definition then you can understand okay suppose here the postgraduate is uh, over the graduate okay but uh, may, but rich is considered to be higher than affluent okay so that is the main thing that is if you consider postgraduate x i okay uh, and uh, graduate is your uh, x j Okay, so that is two observation. First observation is Xi and this is graduate is your Xj observation. Okay, so Xi is greater than Xj, but if you consider the second group that is affluent is your Yi and Rh is your Yj. So Yj is greater than Yi. So uh, two groups are observed, but one in uh, for the first group, the, the first observation is greater than the second observation, but for the second group, second observation is greater than the first observation. If it happens, so there is a discordance, okay? So I will, uh, so that is, there is a dissimilarity between the groups, okay? Uh, that is considered in case uh, of uh, uh, finding out the correlation between uh, such ordinal variables, okay? So look at our categorical variables, okay? So look, uh, when we want to uh, find out the correlation of categorical variables, this is one such way to find out the discordance parities, okay? And also ties and concordance. So for ties, we will handle some different formula. So we, we will, I will show you what is that. And look at this concordance part. Here, your a, Xi is greater than Xj. If you consider this is your first observation for the education level, postgraduate XI, you can consider graduate as your XI, okay? Either you have to choose. I have, I told you in the last session that it is up to you, how can you, or how do you want to define your observations? And then you have to find concordance and discordance, okay? <coughs> Sorry. So here, your if I consider my the this is the postgraduate is the first observation of education education level. So postgraduate is greater than graduate, and affluent also greater than middle class. That is my the YI observation for the second group. That is financial status. Okay, so YI is greater than YJ. So if this happens, either. Xi is greater than Xj and also uh, Yi is greater than Yj. Then the those two group, uh, the, then these two groups uh, for these two observations, these two groups are concordant paired. Okay, concordant paired, and uh, that is there are similarity between these two groups. And if uh, you if you want to say in a reverse way, that is if you consider that uh, yes, Xj is less than Xi and Yj is less than Yi, then you can say in that way in that way also then these two groups are concordant okay so i will just show you the mathematical part then you can better understand okay look just go through then you can understand it is a coefficient that represents the degree of concordance between two columns of ranked data, okay? The greater the number of inversions, the smaller the coefficient will be. I will explain you what does it mean. Range is minus 1.0 to 1.0, okay? So tau A versus tau B. Tau B can handle tied ranks, okay? That there is a, a customized formula which is used in case of tied ranks. We, uh, you have seen the groups which have tied, okay? Okay, so look at this definition. That is what is what are concordant pairs and what are discordant pairs. 
then I will explain you. <coughs> Concordant pairs, the number of observed ranks below a particular rank, which are larger than the particular rank, okay? I know it is not easy to understand right now. When I show you the example, then you can understand, okay? Now, discordant pairs are what? The number of observed ranks below a particular rank which are smaller in value than the particular rank. Okay, so this is what I have to told uh, right now. Just go through this. The candles tau b correlation coefficient tau b is a non-parametric measure of association based on the number of non-parametric because it, uh, you cannot find out any um, uh, population parameter, you cannot estimate any population parameter like mean, okay, uh, median mode, okay. Here you have to uh, go for non parametric test, okay. So uh, it is not uh, uh, you are estimating uh, population parameter mean, okay. So it is association based on the number of uh, co concordances and discordances in paired observations. Okay, so suppose two observations are concordant if they are in the same order with respect to each variable. That is with respect to each group. That is xi is less than xj and yi is less than yj. Or if xi is greater than xj and yi is greater than yj. What I have explained in the example. Uh, they are discordant if they are in reverse ordering for X and Y. Okay, they are in reverse ordering means these two observations uh, are in reverse ordering, okay, for X and Y. Or the values are arranged in opposite directions, okay. Opposite directions. What does it mean? That is, if xi is less than xj and yi is greater than yj, that means if postgraduate is greater than, or if xi is greater than xj and yi is greater, less than yj, that is uh, for, for that discordant, if postgraduate is greater than graduate, but uh, affluent is rich, uh, affluent level that is less than the financial status rich. So in that case, this is these two groups are discord. These paired observations are discordant for the corresponding groups. Okay, so the two observations are tied. If x i equal to x j and or y i equal to y j, that is, it may happen. Your middle financial status was middle class for one observation and another for uh, for another observation it is rich but both uh, for the uh, education level uh, the uh, uh, observations are uh, same that is graduate so in that case this is two observations are tied okay and it may happen that is uh, both are graduate uh, uh, for the um, education level and both are uh, either middle class or both are rich for the financial status, then xi equal to xj and yi equal, yi equal to yj. This may be one condition for uh, tied observe, uh, for two observations to be tied. Uh, and another one is xi equal to xj or yi equal to yj. That is xi may equal to xj, it may either it may happen or yi equal to yj. That is, uh, it may happen that is xi is less than xj and yi equal to yj. Or xi is greater than xj and yi equal to yj. This may be the case. Or yi is greater than yj and xi equal to xj. Or yi is less than yj and xi equal to xj. That may be the also case. Okay. So then we just consider the observations to be as tight, okay? So now come to the example part, then you can understand better. <coughs> Sorry. Look, 
suppose um, 12 um, if there is an exhibition going on art exhibitions and to uh, 12 uh, um, art pieces are available and the, the, there is a master and there is a student one what the evaluator of those are okay of those 12 words so they give give ranks okay so just look this is the ranks of uh, this is the uh, just wait one minute So this is uh, the ranks given by master and student one. So look, master has given rank one to 12. Okay. In, asc uh, uh, in ascending order. Okay. So, and student one gives also rank, but for the first third, uh, student one gives two. That is, uh, he, his uh, evaluation is uh, uh that that the art uh, that the uh, art was ranked as second position okay and for the uh, uh, for the second rank well, that is a uh, uh, master has given second rank but student one has given first rank and uh, for uh, the art where master has given third rank student one has given fourth rank so look, there is a little bit uh, correspondence. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Okay, so when I look, so this is my concordance pair. Uh, when I have to calculate candlestick, that is uh, your concordance pair minus discordance pair by concordant plus discordant pair. Okay, so this is the formula. So how do uh, how do you get concordance pairs as sixty? Look, this is this C column stands for concordant pair. Does D column stands for discordant pair? Okay. So look. Okay. If this student one gives two for the for, for the art where master has given first rank. So what are the ranks below uh, greater than the uh, uh, particular rank two mentioned below? Four, three, six, five, eight, seven, ten, nine, twelve, eleven. Okay. So there are ten ranks which are below second rank which are position whose position who, who which lie below this particular rank second and greater than the value okay there are two conditions they needs to be a they these values need to uh, lie underneath the uh, given rank and also larger than the given rank for to uh, so that we can consider them as uh, to the as to be the number of concordant pairs for the corresponding rank so this is uh, 10 so i have given 10 so what is the number of discordant pairs the number the value okay that that lies below the given rank but smaller than the value of the given rank so only one is present below two and this is smaller than two and no no else value uh, is uh, lying below this uh, two which is smaller than two every value lying below second two hmm, every value lying below the second rank that is two is greater than the particular rank two so uh, only one is uh, smaller so this is your number of discordant pair for this rank okay so i have mentioned here one okay similarly for one uh, what are those uh, four three two uh, ten concordant pairs uh, because all the values lying below one are greater than one and there is no value smaller than one so it is uh, zero for discordant pair now come to this four uh, so how many values are there? Look, three is smaller, so I cannot consider it. Six, five, eight, seven, ten, nine, twelve, eleven. Those are greater uh, greater than four and line below four. Okay, so my um, that is in total eight. So my concordant uh, number of pairs is eight. Now my discordant pair is three uh, one because on that value. <coughs> Sorry, because the value three is lying below four. Okay, 
and it is uh, smaller than four, smaller than the given rank four. So the discordant uh, number of discordant pair is one here. Now look at three. So obviously eight concordant pairs, but zero discordant pair. No value lying below is smaller than three. So then come to six. So uh, look, every value uh, except five lying below are greater than six. So it is six. And if uh, uh, only five is smaller below, say, uh, which is lying below six. So it is the discordant pair is one. So similarly for five, it is six, zero. If you move on in this way for eight, it is uh, four. And uh, uh, and the discordant pair is one because seven is low, lying below eight and it is smaller than eight. And 10, 9, 12, 11 are lying below eight but greater than the value eight. So it is four for the concordant pairs. Okay, for seven rank it is four, zero. For 10, it is um, two and discordant uh, for, uh, it is two for concordant pairs and one for discordant pairs for nine. It is two for concordant pairs, zero for discordant pairs for 12. It is zero for concordant pairs and one for discordant pairs. And uh, for 11, there is no value underneath it. So we can, we will not uh, compute concordant and discordant pairs for the uh, value 11 because there is no value lying below 11. This is the last value, okay. Understood. So now if you uh, uh, total, what the if you do total of concordant pairs 10 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 0 so this is uh, in total 60 and uh, if you uh, uh, add this discordant pairs 1 2 3 4 5 6 so now you have to ju just uh, find out Kendall's tau that is 60 minus 6 that is c minus d by 60 plus 6 that is c plus d so c minus d is your numerator c plus d is your denominator so in this way you have uh, you have find uh, find out you have found out uh, that is the candle is 0 0.818 okay now look at the example 2 here just look uh, just if i have already told you now i will explain you this part that is the greater the number of inversions the smaller the coefficient will be so look at the inversion part Look, for the art where master has evaluated the first rank, student two, okay, student two has given 12th rank. And for the two, uh, for the art where the master has given 12th rank, student has given first rank. So this is the inversion. That is the loss of discrepancy exists between the uh, observed, between the observations, uh, okay, uh, between the corresponding observations, okay. So, but for the middle values, there is no as such convert, and there is uh, there is no as such uh, discrepancies, okay. They are almost correspondent to each other. Like if master has evaluated two uh, for an art where student two has evaluated also second rank, okay. So uh, only for the first and twelfth there is a inversion. So how does it affect look here obviously look for the, the these 12 rank the values greater than 12 are not present lying below so the concordant pairs is zero and every value is less than that these 12 lying below 12 so the discordant pair is 11. now if you look for this two and three four five six so you will find concordant pairs, this, 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 and for 11, uh, the concordant pair is zero because no value uh, lying, there is a value one, but uh, the no value lying below is greater than 11. So it is zero, but there is a value which is smaller than the uh, value 11 and lying below, that is one, so the discordant pair one. So if you add this, C column and D column, you, you will find 45 and it is your 21 discordant pairs. Okay, so concordant pairs is 45 and discordant pairs is 21. So if you calculate, it is 0 0.364. So how do we decide that is it is uh, which one is significant and not? Then you have to check the p-value. Okay, for a given threshold of alpha, 
you know how to do hypothesis testing it's up to you then you have to check this okay so based on that you may find find that if you check this <clears throat> then you find that uh, <clears throat> this point eight one eight is uh, uh, tells you this the, the, the observations are strongly correspondent with, with each other okay so this is how we can uh, find out our relation coefficient and its significance okay the, that is if, if for a given p value and alpha for a sorry for a given value of alpha if you find out the p value significant okay you know how to find out that you have to choose your alpha then you can uh, say yes this data set is uh, of my use because the corresponding observations for the two groups for the two variables are uh, are related to each other or have a strong measure of uh, uh, have a strong association with each other okay but compared to the second uh, one there is a lot of there is a lot of uh, uh, dissimilarity present between the observations due to only the extreme uh, uh, due to the inverse due to the inversions of values at the extreme observations okay that is one uh, is given by the master but student two has given for that 12 and where, whereas master has given for a art 12th rank but student two has given first rank so in this case you can eliminate that is this kind of uh, data is not suitable to you and this uh, the first one data is of used to you okay is used uh, is can be used for your purpose okay so this is how we have to check okay understood how to do, find out the uh, correlation coefficient um, using candle star for categorical variables yes ma'am now i come to another part that is very important it's true it's straight okay in the last session i told you what is confidence interval you have you all have understood that is a range of values bounded above and below the statistics mean okay that likelihood content and unknown population parameter okay and that is your confidence interval so suppose if you use a confidence interval of 4 and 47% of your sample picks an answer you can be sure that if you if you uh, ask the question uh, to the uh, if you ask the question of the entire relevant population between uh, 47 minus 4 that is 43% and 47 plus 4 that is 51% would have picked the answer that is uh, the confidence uh, interval is your 43% lower boundary and uh, for 51% is your upper boundary so if your confidence interval is 4 okay and you are you know that 47% uh, of your sample picks an answer okay uh, that is from the entire relevant population would have picked that answer okay then this is the way the um, so now uh, so you know the confidence level is uh, actually the percentage of probability or certainty that the confidence interval okay confidence level understand there uh, now i have i'm talking now about confidence level okay confidence interval is a range of values where uh, your unknown population parameter is lying okay uh, so but uh, uh, that is uh, the range of values above and below the statistics mean where your unknown population parameter is 
lying okay but confidence level is your is the percentage of probability or certainty that the confidence interval would contain the true population parameter when you draw a random sample many times okay so how many times how will you decide that is a uh, uh, that is, uh, suppose you are telling, uh, we are 95% certain. That means, uh, it, that is your confidence level. That most of these sam samples, when you draw uh, samples many times now, so out of 100, 95 times your samples, uh, that is, you know, each sample has different confidence interval, but most of that, uh, more, uh, this 90, then you are sure that uh, for the 95 times, the, the uh, samples contain the true population parameter within the confidence interval, okay? Within the confidence interval, the true population parameter is lying. For, uh, and uh, that is for 95 times. If you set your confidence level 95%, understood? That is if you draw 100 times samples, so out of that 95 samples uh, will uh, are going to uh, include the true population parameter within their respective confidence interval. Understood? So in a uh, different way, you can say a 95% uh, confidence level implies that 95% of the confidence intervals would include the true population parameter. Because 95% samples means 95% samples, they give different confidence intervals. So out of 100 confidence intervals, 95 confident intervals uh, are going to include the true population parameter. That is another way uh, of uh, interpretation, okay? That is another way of how you can interpret this uh, confidence level. So now what are the factors that affect confidence intervals? Okay. So I have to discuss this thing right now. Okay. So just wait. I'm showing you one figure, then you can understand. Look at the figure. First look at this figure. Try to understand. Look, now the corresponding trigger. Try 
try to understand first. As the sample size increase, margin of error gets decreased, okay? So the size of the confidence interval for a given confidence level, if your confidence level 95% or 99%, whatever, for a given confidence level, the size of the confidence interval are uh, determined by three factors. First, sample size, okay? Second, percentage. Third, population size. So what is sample size? The larger your sample, the more sure you can be that their answers truly reflect the population, okay? This indicates that um, the, for the, a given confidence level, uh, the larger you, your sample size, the smaller your confidence interval, okay? However, the relationship is not linear, okay? That is not linear means if you are double, if you are doing, uh, if you do uh, doubling the sample size, it does not mean the, uh, doubling the sample size does not mean uh, half, 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 doing half of the confidence interval. It is not, it does not work like that. Okay, it is not linear. Really, okay, the relationship is not linear. Okay, that is if you just increase the sample size twice and you think your confidence interval gets up. So it is your, uh, it is your wrong thought, okay. It is, it is obviously true that when you increase the sample size, then your confidence interval gets shrinked, okay? So obviously your margin of error gets reduced, okay? And second thing is your percentage. So it is all obviously it ob your accuracy also depends on the percentage of your sample. Okay, that picks a particular answer. Percentage of sample that picks a particular answer. If 99% of your sample say yes and 1% said no, the chance of error are remote irrespective of sample size. Okay. However, if the percentage are 51% and 49%, the chances of error much are much greater. Okay, that is if 51% say yes and 49% say no, okay, then chances of error are much greater. But when 99% sample said yes and 1% say no, so the chances of error are remote, okay, irrespective of sample size. Whether you take your sample size 10 or 100, uh, it does not matter, okay. So, so it is easier to be sure of extreme answers than of middle of the road ones, okay? So when you're determining the sample size for a given level of accuracy, you must uh, use the worst case percentage that is 50 percent okay you should uh, also use the this percentage if you want to determine a general level of accuracy for a sample you already have okay so to determine the confidence interval for a specific answer your sample has given you can use the percentage picking that answer and get a smaller interval okay
Now the third one is that, that is the percentage of, uh, so first your sample size, second the percentage of the sample that have given the answer, okay, that is, uh, that have picked an answer, okay, so, um, that have picked a particular answer, and the third factor is your population size. Okay, so um, there may be the number of people in a city you are studying, okay. Um, so the number of people who buy new cars, etc. Often you may not, you uh, don't need to know the exact population size, okay. This is not problem. The actually, uh, the so just uh, look. It is the, it is, if you look at the, the mathematics of probability, which, is a, which proves that the size of population is irrelevant unless the size of the sample exceeds a few percent of the total population you are examining. Okay, so this is not the case. This means that a sample of 500 people is equally useful in, ex, uh, in uh, examining the opinion of a state uh, having one lakh people. Okay, so for this reason, the sample, um, um, a, you can use a sample uh, uh, calculator which can grow the population size when it is large or unknown, okay? So population size is only likely to be a factor when you work with a relatively small and known group of people, okay? That is when your population size is less and you, you have taken a sample size larger than that. Then you have to be cautious that no, your, your population size needs to, uh, needs to be larger. So in that case, if it is a small, um, if it, the size is small in number, then you have to learn about the population size. Otherwise, if it is large enough uh, and unknown, then you do, and your sample drawn is, you know that is uh, compared, uh, comparatively very much less, then you don't need to bother about population size at all, okay? Okay, what I've covered, just, uh, just try to understand, okay? Sample size, percentage, population. Okay. I'm giving you one minute. And when you are talking about population size, so you um, obviously consider the different types of uh, members present in the population because your sample need to be random, okay? You cannot 
take uh, bias that is non-random samples because there will be uh, flaws present in the uh, in such sampling procedure. So you must draw samples uh, randomly. You must collect random samples uh, from the relevant uh, population so that you can uh, select every uh, we, uh, there are the, because every member of the population can get equal chance of getting selected in that case. So, okay, that is important. Suppose you are doing survey, you are calling people during the day, but you miss almost everyone who works. Okay, so uh, you, you have uh, gathered information about the non-working population when you are doing such sample. Okay, when you are framing such sample, you are, your members are only non-working population. Okay, uh, so that cannot be assumed to accurately represent the entire population so, because entire population includes working and non-working okay um, that is uh, your when your entire population is uh, including both working and non-working and you have to work on that that is you have to estimate your population parameter based on sample statistics okay uh, and you have to cons uh, you know the that your population consists of both working your population comprises working and non working uh, people then uh, obviously you have to uh, select your uh, sample randomly if you collect random sample then it will give you genuine result otherwise it will carry flaws okay that cannot be relied because you are only uh, if you call people during the day and most working people and you miss out most working people so it is obviously uh, your uh, it is uh, obviously a, a um, faulty sample which includes only uh, non working members of the population it cannot estimate the from this sample statistic you cannot estimate the population parameter as expected, okay. So why? Why when the when my I shrink the confidence interval, my confidence uh, is, uh, my margin of error becomes smaller. Okay, and why with the increase of numbers of uh, samples, uh, my confidence interval gets, obviously my margin of error gets reduced. So why do uh, does it a better estimate and how does it help to improve my power of the uh, power that is one minus beta and reducing type two error beta? Okay, you know power of the hypothesis. Okay, so we will work on that. Power of the hypothesis test. Okay, you know that that is oh, when my null hypothesis is false, we correctly reject it. Okay, we have to accept false. We have to accept alternative hypothesis. Okay, when my null hypothesis is false. And if we retain that, that is when null hypothesis is false, but we are retaining it, then it is type 2 error. That is my beta. Type 2 error means that uh, my beta error. Okay. And what is alpha error? When my null hypothesis is true, but I'm rejecting it. I'm considering it as alternative one. Then it, that is my type one error alpha. Okay. So uh, in the last session, I told you now how this alpha beta sample size is related. So first you have to understand few basic things. That is how these confidence intervals uh, get shrink when we are increasing the sample size. Okay, and then the margin of error gets reduced, and how it it correspondingly helps in reducing, and how it uh, it helps you in reducing the amount of beta error. Okay, that is the type two error. Beta gets reduced and the power gets increased. Power of that hypothesis test 
it's increased. So how do we do that? Okay. Okay, so before going to this part, I just want to give one example for this also. Okay, then I come to that part. Okay. How many of you have joined? Okay, look, Ujjal, what are you doing? Just off your screen. Look, suppose uh, in a in a medication, if a medication was tested, okay, on ten individuals and seven of them found it effective, okay. So the estimated drug efficacy is seventy percent. Understood. Out of ten, uh, you have found that seven people in seven people the drug medication is found to be effective so the uh, drug efficacy is 70% okay but since the goal is to predict the efficacy in a whole population okay statisticians need to um, account for the uncertainty of, of testing only 10 people because the sample size is very much uh, less in number okay that is only 10 in number so uh, confidence intervals are calculated okay uh, that encompasses the sample size the range of responses and the laws of probability okay uh, in this um, so you can say that is the in this uh, in this example look at this the confidence interval is almost 42 percent 42 percent to you can say and 98 percent okay so a range of 56 uh, percentage points okay So if your range is 56 percentage points, okay, just citing one example, okay, that is if uh, this is for these 10 people, okay, so that it is 56 uh, percentage points. So after testing only 10 people, uh, you could say with high confidence interval that the drug is effective for between 42 percent and 98 percent of people, people in the whole population. Okay, because in that case, that population parameter is likely to uh, uh, fall within that 56 percentage points. Okay. But if you divide the confidence interval in half, you get the margin of error. Okay. That is in the 28 percent. That is, I want my my confidence interval to be 28 percent instead of 56 percent. 
so you know the larger the margin of error the less accurate the prediction okay and the smaller the margin of error the more accurate the prediction so a margin of error that is almost 30 percent is still quite a wide range but obviously less than that 56 okay uh, so now i want that the if you want to uh, taste this uh, taste uh, new drug on 1000 people instead of 10 people and it was effective in 700 of them so your uh, drug efficacy is still going to be around 70 percent uh, yet this prediction is much more accurate why the confidence interval for the larger sample will be between 67 and 73 percent with a margin of error three percent okay So you could say this drug is effective to be 70% plus or minus 3% for, for the entire population. That uh, the, the value lies within 67 to 73%. Okay. So the, the So it is uh, obviously not possible that you can exactly predict for, with 100% accuracy, but uh, there is always some uncertainty and the margin of error is what quantifies that uncertainty, okay? So the margin of error defines the range of predictions within which statisticians are very confident the true member will be found, okay? So the margin of error defines the range of range of predictions within which statisticians are very confident that the true number will be found. That is the true population parameter will fall within that range. So, uh, so an acceptable margin of error is a matter of judgment, okay, based on the degree of accuracy require, required in the conclusions. So it is uh, uh, up to you what margin of error you are going to take okay understood Now I will explain you why these things happen and how is it related to the power of a hypothesis? How is it related to the reducing of type 2 error beta for a given value of alpha? For a given value of alpha, okay. Uh, look. Okay, try to, I'm giving you one minute. Try to take down the terminologies discussed and uh, if you have any doubt, just ask me, then I will move on.
anyone has any question okay so look there are two types of drugs okay drug a and drug b look at the distributions of drug a and drug b that is the distribution of its usage okay understood okay so look if i want to have power 0.8 that is i believe drug a and drug b has same kind of efficacy this is my null hypothesis and no <laughs> drug a and drug b has not same kind of efficacy drug b may be greater than drug a or drug a may be greater than drug b that is drug a is not equal to drug b that is the efficacy of drug a is not equal to the efficacy of drug b so that is my alternative hypothesis so when i'm talking that for example i'm considering my power uh, if i want uh, to have power equal to 0.8 that is 80% okay so that me means uh, that implies I, I want to have at least 80% chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis okay so look then if there is a little uh, if there is a very little overlap between these two distributions okay you know one is for i have i in the last session you have noted you noticed the one distribution is drawn for the hypothesized value mentioned in the null hypothesis okay and uh, you may you may find out some uh, other mean for alternative hypothesis so for that when we are considering beta then for that we have to draw a distribution so for that there is a mean so don't uh, bother with that just consider drug a follows one distribution with a particular mean for that of set of observations for that set of members belonging to the drug a and for drug b there is a set of members present which uh, uh, which are the samples uh, of drug b okay so the samples of drug b represent a different mean for drug b for the distribution of drug b so if uh, this means okay if this means are very much far away from this okay the mean look the they are very much far away from each other the mean of this distribution so that is why the, there is a little overlap at the end okay very little overlap okay so if so that is what uh, i'm telling you if there is a very little overlap a small sample size will give me power 0.8 okay that is if your small uh, if your sample size is small you you can correctly reject your null hypothesis if you set your power 0.8 that is 80 percent correct rejection of null hypothesis for small size if your the if your the mean of drug a and mean of drug b are far away so that there is a very little overlap at the end okay but However, look, so if, however, the more overlap is between two distributions, this is, you know, we have found. So, you know, when you, uh, in, uh, so, you know, this is, This is how the overlap happens because those means of drug A and drug B samples are not very far away. The look at the differences. Okay. So these differences are not uh, very much uh, far away from each other. That is why the, uh, these two distributions overlap uh, a lot with each other. Okay. Why? Because why? because larger so the larger the sample size needs 
to be in order to have power 0.8. Why? Nurtured the sample size means. Because look, the green distribution is represented by the green uh, dotted ball, green balls, uh, green circles here, and pink distribution is represented by the pink circles. They, they, they are the members of the respective samples of drug A and drug B. Okay, so they get overlapped with each other. Okay, so that's why you cannot determine the power that is you cannot uh, do the rejection of null hypothesis correctly if you want uh, your power to be 0.8 okay because the estimated variations of mean okay are, are very much overlapping okay that is the very look every uh, every uh, circle, every green circle uh, occupies uh, uh, the almost uh, the almost the green area along with the uh, along with the areas occupied by uh, uh, or they share the same place with the um, pink circles. Okay, so that is why you cannot say. Okay, there is a variation in the there are enough variations in the expected mean, which cannot be used to confidently estimate the population mean, okay? So that is why uh, for the, the uh, here you need larger sample size, okay? To be in order to have power equal to 0.8. So look at this. Some uh, these two peaks are not that much clear, okay. But because this is not what you do, this is what the sample size equal to ten is, is needs to be done. That is more. The more you increase the sample size, the more accuracy you are getting. Why? Look, for if your sample size is one, so, okay. Uh, I'm just giving you one example. Mm, I just do one thing for you. I'm just opening notepad and share, show you something. Suppose this is your first sample, okay? This is your population, okay? And you have to, your sample size is one. So your sample will be either 23 or four or five or six, or 88 or one, any one of them, okay? But whatever be your sample size, the mean is equal to the magnitude of that value, okay? The mean is equal to the magnitude of the uh, member uh, or, or, or equal to the element, equal to the magnitude of the element you have drawn. That is, if it is, it is also mean, oh, oh. And it is also your mean, okay? So this is the case. But if your sample size is two, then it may be uh, one, 23, okay? It may be 23, four, or it may be one, four, it may be four, five, combination of two, it may be 688. So then your uh, mean is uh, just, you have to add these two values and divide it by sample size. That is 23 plus one in that case. Okay. So look for sample size. 
example 123 the mean is 1 plus 23 by 2 okay You have to move on this okay so in that case you will find Look, you find you just look. Few values are lie below two point five, four point five, five. So there is a tendency of uh, most of the values to concentrate at to concentrate at this zone. Okay, if you consider six one. So this is the way and few are the extreme values like uh, some are uh, 12 13.5 uh, okay and uh, only uh, these are the values like uh, 688 one okay some values are for 46 47 due to the presence of these extreme values 88 so you can if you uh, do these things i am not moving on computing these things you can do uh, then you will find that uh, there may be 25 percent data uh, which uh, which show such extreme observations but 75 percent of the data um, just get closer to the mean okay uh, so that will be good to use uh, uh, if you increase your sample size from one to two then it, it will better estimate your population parameter but look here every value is equal to mean okay 23 so every value gets dispersed okay so they never get close to any central value every value for when you consider sample size to be equal to one then every value gets dispersed so no value becomes close to a center value there is a no ten there is no such tendency so you cannot uh, there is no central tendency of, of this value so you cannot use this uh, members uh, this sample to estimate uh, your population parameter you can understand so 
uh, this good to use sample size equal to two compared to one. So if you increase the size, then what happens? Okay. Just wait. So that is what? When you increase the size, so look, every value for the sample size one just gets dispersed. Okay, it just gets dis distributed uh, from uh, which covers the uh, all the uh, range. Okay, so for the second uh, drug B, it also occupies the same po some positions which are already occupied by the green. Uh, members of the sample for drug A. So for the, there, there are overlapping happens for sample size equal to A for uh, drug A and drug B, uh, for the distribution of drug A and drug B. And when it is the sample size is equal to two, uh, there are some, to some extent, closeness happens, uh, but uh, also there are a lot of variations. But uh, in this example, for the sample size to be 10, look, the uh, sample for the drug B, the members of the sample for drug B are densely uh, uh, located and just uh, uh, they represent the uh, central position for the drug B. Okay, that is they just get close to the mean for the drug B. Every value just gets close to the mean of the drug B. And every value, that is every uh, uh, green uh, uh, circle or green rectangle, whatever you say, every uh, 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 the, every green bar, uh, which just gets close to the mean of the green distribution of the uh, distribution of drug A. Okay, that is uh, just gets, gets close to the mean of the distribution of drug A. So there is no overlapping between this green and pink distribution. Uh, the big look, no values get overlapped. So. So in this case, in this example, the estimated means are so close to the population means that they no longer overlap. Okay. Understood. Understood. The estimated means are so close to the population mean that they no longer overlap. So this is what we want. Okay, understand? So when you increase the sample size, what actually happens? So they just, in here only one distribution is drawn. So when you shrink the confidence interval, so uh, with the increase of sample size, the so confidence interval gets shrinked. Why? Because the sample size gets more close to the central tendency. They will not get scattered to the entire range. Okay. Understood. And in the given and the, in the following example, where I am um, trying to uh, let you understand the power, uh, we have taken two distributions for drug A and drug B. Okay. Now look. So for a for power the to be 0.8, okay. The 
and the threshold for significance alpha 0 0.05 okay i have taken this so your effect size is the estimated dif uh, difference in the means uh, in regard to your pooled estimated standard deviations okay so that pooled estimated standard deviation is your root over s1 square plus s2 square by 2 square root of this s1 square plus s2 square by 2 s1 represents the standard deviation of drug a distribution s2 represents the standard deviation of drug b distribution okay so uh, standard deviation you know what happened the standard deviation caused the flatness and pickedness okay Oof, just wait look this is the different standard deviation the pickedness and flatness so that may happen okay so you have to consider that thing okay and also the difference in means so you can deduce effect size in other ways also but this is one way so uh, this is uh, this is why we need to compute because you need to determine sample size okay so yeah, effect size just determines uh, what is the estimated difference in regard to your pooled estimated standard deviations okay uh, so because the flatness and the, or pickedness of these two distributions will ultimately uh, relate to the difference will ultimately uh, just uh, decide what what to be the uh, how that is at what uh, ratio or at what uh, degree the means of the two distribution the estimated difference in the means of two distributions uh, will make an effect okay uh, that those members will not get overlapped okay so that we can get estimated means which are uh, close to population mean so that uh, they will no longer uh, overlap so this is how this effect size uh, it's, uh, this is how we have to uh, compute the effect size so that we can understand well so that we can understand that is at what uh, degree of uh, the estimated difference in means with respect to this pooled estimated standard deviations uh, members of the uh, of both the distributions will not overlap okay so So here I want to say you, if your effect size is small, okay, and uh, then uh, you have to, uh, then your, uh, then you have to take large sample. And if your effect size is larger, then you, do, you have to take small sample, okay. So I'm just showing you one thing. Okay, I'm just coming within two minutes.
So if you use some statistical calculator, then for this given value 0 0.8, and you can check that 0 0.05, and uh, you may find that the effect size is your, uh, suppose the mean for these two groups, that is the difference is 10, okay, say, and if it is your uh, standard deviation is like uh, six and seven for the group A and uh, for the drug A and drug B, so it is obviously your uh, um, something uh, 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 that is square root of six square uh, uh, plus seven square by two, okay. So suppose uh, that will be some value, okay, like you say, um, and if, if you find out your effect size uh, to be two or 1.5, whatever, and then uh, based on that, you have to give those values so, uh, using some statistical calculator to determine your sample size. If you find, say you have found that the sample size is nine, okay. Uh, you may find out sample size to be 10. So what does it mean? That means you have to take nine members from each of the group, okay? That is from, uh, for drug A, the sample size would be nine and for drug B, the sample size would be nine. So that the means of these two groups will not overlap with each other and they can be better, uh, they can better estimate the population mean, okay? So that will be the right sample size if you want 80% uh, power, okay, of, from this uh, sample uh, to estimate uh, your population parameter, okay? So this is how you have to determine your sample size, okay? Understood? Understood? So now I'm telling you something. Vidisha, Rajkamal and Ujjal are present, what happened to the others? Okay, guys. Just remember, I told you now I will discuss this first. So the second for the, so the spot for a given level of significance alpha, increasing the sample size n will reduce B. So, uh, so ultimately it will increase your power because the effect size gets increased and uh, okay. So here the one thing you just keep in your mind when the effect size gets increased, there will be less number, the sample size uh, will be smaller. And if the effect size is uh, smaller, then your sample size will be larger. Okay, to determine uh, the uh, the sample size uh, for a given value of power and for a given level of significance alpha, okay. And uh, in that case, the effect size and sample size is related in this way. And if, we, if, if you were considering uh, only the significance alpha, not power that is uh, you are considering that it is uh, the that is the given level of significance uh, alpha is 0 0.05 okay you don't know the power then you are increasing the sample size and uh, it is just reducing your beta okay so in turn actually it is actually uh, in, in turn it is actually uh, enhancing it is actually uh, increasing your power okay but when you know power that is, it is already told that is 80% is your power, okay? And uh, significance, uh, level of significance, that is alpha is 0 0.05. Then sample size uh, can be determined from the effect size. We have discussed that. And how this effect size and sample size related, you have understood that when effect size is larger, small sample size is enough to estimate the population parameter. But when the effect size is smaller, large sample size is required.
to estimate the population parameter. Now come to the third line where it is mentioned for a given sample size then. Sample size is fixed, but decreasing alpha will increase beta, whereas increasing alpha will decrease beta. Okay, this is not B. Okay, this is beta. By mistake, it is written here as lowercase b. Okay, so consider it as beta. So oh, for a given sample size, then decreasing alpha will increase beta, whereas increasing alpha will decrease beta, okay? Because when you increase the sample size, okay? Uh, sorry, when, for a given simple sample size, when you increase this alpha, okay? When you increase the alpha, that is, suppose earlier your alpha was 0 0.01. Now you increase it to 0 0.05, okay? So what happened? It will just move towards left, okay? Understood? So when you increase it from 1% to 5% or 5% to 10%, then obviously it will, uh, it will do what? That is, it will move towards left. The, you, that is, uh, you, are, you, are, uh, you are just giving... Um, uh, the, uh, you're just uh, trying to eliminate uh, those members uh, uh, when your null hypothesis is true, okay, but you are rejecting it or considering it that this is false, okay. Uh, so, type 2 error is what? That is, uh, you, you are uh, re uh, rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, so you know, so you are rejecting the null hypothesis incorrectly. That is beta. That is what you, uh, that is you, what is your power? That is you have to accept alternative hypothesis. That is when you correctly rejecting null hypothesis, but when you are incorrectly rejecting null hypothesis, that is your null hypothesis is false but you are considering it as true. That is beta. So look, when your null hypothesis is, I'm just showing so you can understand. Showing you one example. Look, I'm showing you something. Sample size equal to say 10, okay? And if you increase your alpha from 1% to 5%, okay. Okay, so what will happen? Beta is gets decreased, okay, but not in a linear way, 
okay but that is if you double uh, double this alpha and beta gets halved does, does not think in that way in some nonlinear way alpha if you increase alpha uh, for a given sample size the beta value gets reduced why look alpha is this your null hypothesis is right for true for true null you are rejecting okay For false null, you are not rejecting. Okay, look. Now, when your null hypothesis is true, and you, uh, you, if it is five percent, so you have you give turns that for the five percent uh, times when your null statement is true, but you are rejecting. Okay, so when you you increase it from one to five percent, so that means. Uh, if I draw a graph, just imagine the distribution graph, you know the bell curve graph. So the that alpha just get shifted towards left now. Uh, for, for so uh, what happened you were giving a chance to the uh, dist uh, distribution drawn for the alternative hypothesis okay there is another distribution drawn for the alternative hypothesis so uh, so what happened you, obviously your beta gets reduced that is uh, that is uh, when you increase this so the probability for false null okay you are no, so you, when you want to uh, you don't uh, you want to reject 5% true uh, true null when this uh, uh, when your null hypothesis is true but you are rejecting okay mm. then it is your uh, when your uh, null hypothesis is true and you are rejecting then it is increased from one percent to five percent so when it is five percent so earlier so earlier beta was your false null which you are not rejecting okay that means what uh, that is you have to accept the alternative hypothesis but you are going with that uh, that is your true null okay so obviously the you are considering that one as your uh, true null so you are considering means considering false null as true null so obviously this range when gets shifted the alpha when gets shifted towards left when increase the value from 1% to 5% so the, if you look at the distribution uh, the distribution drawn for the null hypothesis and there is a distribution for the alternative hypothesis so uh, you just look the beta uh, error just gets reduced okay because then there there will be less chance then there will be less chance you are uh, you will reject the false null okay there, that is there will be less chance you will reject the uh, false chance uh, that is the false null okay you are not rejecting the, the probability 
immediately gets reduced because your alpha gets shifted towards left. Uh, I have to draw one. I cannot draw it on notepad. Um, okay, I am showing you one thing. It will be good. Look. Look. This is the case. If you if you increase your alpha, so alpha say it is 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and you increase uh, it to 0 0.05, so it will just get shifted towards left. So if your alpha gets shifted towards left, so your beta also gets reduced. Understood? If your alpha gets shifted towards left, your beta also gets reduced. That means um, your power gets increased. That is, you can correctly identify false null and reject them, and you will not uh, retain the false null. Uh, you don't consider the false null as true null because you, you increase the alpha value. When you increase the alpha value, you give more chance, uh, more scope uh, to, the, uh, to those uh, uh, members of the sample uh, that uh, if you are true, I will reject you. Although you are following the true, although you are uh, meeting the, the null hypothesis, but I'm considering you uh, alternative. So obviously when this, this gets increased, your beta gets reduced because uh, the chance of uh, a false null uh, taken to be as true, okay, the chance of false null, that is considering your true null, sorry, so considering your false null as true null, because in the uh, case of measurement of beta error, you're considering false null as true null, okay, that gets reduced because you are already uh, given a chance that uh, whether your uh, any member is following uh, true null, you want to reject it. Okay, this is how it works. Understood? So if you uh, uh, increase alpha to 10%, then obviously beta again gets reduced. Okay. Um, so alpha gets shifted towards left. Understand the, uh, the way alpha and beta is related? Understand? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is from Ujjal. The response has come from Ujjal. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have understood what I try to uh, say you. Okay. So uh, look, if, if now now this happens for a given sample size, when you uh, you know when you fix your sample size, okay, and if you uh, reduce uh, your alpha value, that is, if you uh, suppose if it is your five percent and you want to uh, uh, smaller the value, that is uh, from five to one percent, then obviously the beta gets increased. Why? Because then considering the null, uh, okay, because then considering the false uh, null as true null gets increased, okay, because then considering the probability when you uh, lower the value of alpha, say from five percent to one percent, then this uh, uh, boundary for alpha gets shifted towards right so the beta will also uh, gets increased because this value uh, for the alpha beta the uh, for uh, for the because the value which determines the boundary of alpha gets shifted towards right and hence the beta for the alternative distribution also gets shifted towards right okay so although alpha gets reduced but the probability of considering false null to be as uh, true now gets increased when you reduce uh, that is the probability of considering true null as not true null okay you you uh, you are considering that is yes it is true null but i i want to reject okay but that is that is for minimum percentage 
of values that is uh, reach for one percentage of values that is uh, the probability of alpha is one percent then obviously the for the alternative hypothesis for the beta error okay for the beta error the probability of considering false null to be as true null okay gets increased understand the chance chance gets increased okay this is how this alpha and beta is related and works okay So you have understood how is how does it work? How it works? So it is uh, when your uh, sample size is fixed, then increasing alpha will just decrease beta and vice versa. So now, if you are uh, trying to uh, know the relation between alpha and sample size, okay. Because the relation between effect size and sample size, the relation between effect size and beta and sample size are powered, the relation between alpha and beta are covered. And these things are very much important. Now we will concentrate uh, in the relation between alpha and sample size, okay. I'm giving you two minutes.
now look how this alpha matters so obviously when alpha gets increased then what happened your power also gets increased because your beta gets reduced okay if the increase of alpha your beta gets reduced power it gets increased so power when power gets increased then uh, you know that is your effect size look when you you correctly reject the null hypothesis uh, when you correctly reject when your null hypothesis is false okay so you can say that the effect size is larger here it is closer but for that case look this is the uh, look this here the effect size is larger enough so you can say that uh, it this uh, in that case the mean the estimated means are better estimate of for population parameter so because the members of the respective distribution just close to the population mean okay so uh, when effect size is larger so small sample size is required okay so thus increasing alpha alpha actually actually helps you to minimize the sample size understood for a given level of power okay understood and if your effect size is like that that is the members just overlap with each other okay then your sample size needs to be more okay so when you decreasing alpha okay so your power also gets decreased okay so so the you are not correctly rejecting the false null hypothesis that is when your null hypothesis is false you are not correctly rejecting it you have to reject it but you are not correctly rejecting it you are doing uh, you are in, you are coming across type 2 error so in that case two distributions just get overlapped with each other and the effect size becomes smaller so uh, so in order to uh, estimate the population mean you have to increase the sample size of the respective distribution so that those members of the respective samples get closer to the population mean and you can better estimate the population parameter okay so uh, for effect size to be small your sample size needs to be much more your sample size needs to be larger when your effect size is small okay so so we can say when you decrease alpha it will also decrease your power so decrease your effect size and then for better accuracy for estimating uh, the population mean you have to increase the sample size understand because then only those distributions can get close to the population parameter because when you increase the sample size then these things will happen okay if you don't increase the sample size then these things will never happen no? that is uh, those uh, estimated means uh, never get close to the population mean okay but when you increase the sample size for a relatively smaller effect size then the estimated means are so close to the population mean that they will no longer overlap and then they they you can say yes your um, sample statistic is uh, more accurately estimate the population parameter okay 
understood how this alpha and sample size is related with each other? So ultimately, when you are increasing your alpha size, okay, when you are increasing your alpha size, then what happens? Your, your power gets what? Tell me, I have to already told you several times. Alpha gets increased, so beta gets reduced. So power gets increased. So when alpha gets increased, power gets increased. Okay? Power gets increased means fx size becomes increased. Okay? So small samples is required. So with the increase of alpha size, Oh, with the increase of alpha value, small sample size is required, okay? But when alpha is, the value of alpha gets reduced, beta gets increased. So when, so corresponding power gets, okay? That is when alpha gets reduced, your beta gets increased, so corresponding power gets reduced, okay? So when power gets reduced, that is effect size get, becomes smaller. So you, have, you need relatively larger sample size. So you can say when alpha gets the when the value of alpha gets reduced, say from five percent to one percent, you you need more sample size. Okay. Understood. How this alpha size? And so how, how this alpha value and sample size gets related with each other? Understand how this value of alpha and sample size gets related with each other? I'm repeating again. That is when you increase alpha value, your beta value gets decreased. So your power gets increased. Okay. That means you are increasing alpha from one to five percent, your power also gets increased. Fx size becomes larger. So small sample size is required. So uh, what does it mean when you increase your alpha value from one percent to five percent, then small sample size is enough. Okay, but when you decrease alpha value that is from five percent to one percent, okay, then your Beta gets increased, power gets reduced, effect size becomes smaller, large sample is required. So what we can say, when you decrease the value of alpha from, say from 5% to 1%, larger sample size will be required to estimate the population parameter. Understood? Yes, ma'am. So today, up to this, okay, Anish, are you there? Anish, are you there? Anish, if you are there, you just stop recording.